Hi there. So, my name is Mike Norton. Um, this is a, a very difficult video for me to make. Um, it, a lot of people are going to probably find this upsetting. Uh, I would like to start this video by explaining that if you're familiar with McKenna Denson and the assaults that she uh, claimed to have been the victim of in January of this year and February of this year, uh, to recap, um, she says that somebody came into her home, broke into her home, and on January 30th, she drank her orange juice, which had been spiked with Drano, which took her to the hospital. Uh, she told me at one point while she was at the hospital, she was non-responsive, uh, completely unconscious and non-responsive. Um, three days later, uh, she said at 4.18 or 4.19 in the morning, somebody set her car on fire and destroyed her only uh, car and then seven days after that um seven days after that she saw somebody in her front yard she went chasing after them to find out why they were in her front yard and somebody else a second person uh attacked her from behind uh knocking her to the ground in in and causing <clears throat> her nose to get broken, her left pinky to get broken, and her right wrist was snapped. Um, I believe it was seven days ago today, uh, today's Memorial Day, somebody by the name of uh, The Mad Domer, I believe is how it's pronounced. Uh, there it is right there, if you can read that. I don't know if that's backwards or not, but uh, The Mad Domer, uh, an LDS fellow, uh, sent me a private message through Reddit where he said to me, do you consider yourself even slightly complicit in McKenna Denson's current public meltdown? My response was, public meltdown? What exactly are you referring to? Her reports to the police of arson, someone breaking into her home, and the assault that she's alleging? As soon as I typed that, I thought to myself, wait a second, okay, those are some pretty serious charges, some pretty serious allegations, and, and it seemed to me like maybe the police in Colorado uh, could use a little help. I don't know. I mean, uh, they, they uh, you know, this happened months ago and no arrests have been made. That was disturbing to me. Um, so I decided that to dig into a little bit, and I am, uh, well, I, I'm... I'm here to announce the fact that I know exactly who it was that put Drano in her orange juice and in all likelihood uh, caught her car on fire and who was responsible for her broken wrist. I told McKenna last night uh, on a video call that years ago when I worked as a bail bondsman, I bailed a couple out of jail by the name of Chris and Becky Tucker in Utah. They had actually uh, locked their adopted child, I think she was five or six years old, in the basement and had nearly starved her to death. Um, her stomach was bloated from malnutrition. Her fingernails and toenails were falling out. This little girl's uh, head, when the DCFS person put his hand on her head, he said he could feel her head moving because she had so much lice. She was locked in a basement with a wash basin full of rusty water, about a half an inch deep, if memory serves me correctly, and a set of metal box springs. And I told McKenna that I thought those two were possibly the two worst people I'd ever met in my entire life. Until this past week. This past week, after uh, spending about 40 hours digging into um, the claims made by McKenna Denson, um, I found the person responsible, and I think that person is quite possibly the worst person I've ever met. Um, and, and it gives me no pleasure to announce the fact that the person that was responsible for those acts, in my opinion, was in fact McKenna Denson. Um, most people might know that, that uh, McKenna and I are friends. I have 
told many people over the last year or so that uh, I believe my exact words were, I trust McKenna implicitly. I trust her implicitly. Uh, she was in Arizona at one point last year to attend a uh, deposition with Joseph Bishop, the man she alleges raped her in uh, the Missionary Training Center. And my sweetie and I were happy to let her stay in our home and sleep in our guest room. Um, I, I know that some sickos out there have suggested that McKenna and I had some sort of a sexual relationship. That is absolutely positively not true, but I suspect after this video, I wouldn't be surprised because it seems to be her M.O. if McKenna tried to make some wild allegations. So uh, this is a special message here to McKenna Denson. Try it, and I will be your worst nightmare. And the fact of the matter is, I probably already am your worst nightmare. I got a hold of some police reports, uh, mug shots. I'm just gonna kinda recap some of the information here. Now, I'm gonna be reading directly from a police report that was taken in uh, September of 2004. So, if you have any questions, you can ask in the comments. If you have deeper questions that need to be answered, call me on my phone. I would be happy to answer those questions for you. Uh, there is no question that you can ask me about this case that I would not be willing to answer. I suspect McKenna Denson might not feel the same way. She tends to give answers, but they kind of conflict with answers she's given in the past. This is from the police report. Um, it says, uh, an anonymous person indicated that June Denson, McKenna Denson's real name is June, she just seemingly picked McKenna out of a hat about 20 years ago and started going by McKenna. I suspect it's because her criminal record as June Hughes was getting too large and she needed a new identity. That is my personal belief. Um, this anonymous person indicated that June Denson has filed a lot of lawsuits. The anonymous person told me that beginning in either Reno or Sparks, Nevada, 20 or 23 years ago, June Denson was arrested for forging a prescription. Uh, the next incident the person told me about was a slip and fall that occurred in Tyler, Texas at a McDonald's restaurant there. I should tell you that uh, these two first incidences we're talking about, I've spoken with McKenna and she has told me that these two incidences are true. She had a slip and fall outside of McDonald's and filed suit or threatened to file suit against McDonald's. She was indeed arrested for stealing a doctor's prescription pad and writing herself some prescription years ago uh, and was arrested and prosecuted for that, if memory serves me correctly. I know she was arrested. The person told me that June was by herself at that time and that she slipped and fell on the sidewalk outside because of a leaky faucet. The person told me that they were not sure if this was a legitimate claim or not, but based on June Hen Denson's history, the person believed it was probably a fraudulent claim. The next incident occurred in Washington, D.C. or Virginia and involved a rental car. The person told me that June Denson had rented a vehicle and had placed a box of dishes in the front passenger seat floorboard area and had claimed with the insurance company or rental car agency that the air conditioning was leaking inside the car and caused the box to get wet. She claimed that when she lifted the box out of the car, the dishes fell out of the box and fell onto the ground and broke. These dishes were supposedly antique dishes and she possibly got a quantity of money from the rental car company. This person could not provide any details about the rental car company that was used by Denson. The next incident the person told me about was in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. I'm gonna stop right there for a second. FYI, I believe it was in 1979, <coughs> When McKenna Denson was impregnated by a man that she claims to be Richard Lee uh, with her first child that she gave up for adoption, uh, McKenna Denson claims that she was raped by this man. And that rape, that she claims she only had sex with him one time, that rape resulted in her pregnancy with her first child that she gave up for adoption. So the next incident the person told me about was in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina and involved a company by the name of Franklin Life Insurance. 
According to this person, Dinson had worked there and began taping conversations with the owner of the business. The person told me that the conversations were of a sexual nature and that June Dinson then used those tapes in some sort of a lawsuit against the life insurance company. The anonymous person did not know whether June Dinson obtained any money from this incident either. The next incident occurred in either Mount Pleasant or Charleston, South Carolina, and occurred, and occurred at a high dollar restaurant called California Dreaming. There is, by the way, a giant police report regarding California Dreaming. I think it's 17 pages long. That's a fascinating read. I will uh, very soon provide links to these reports that I'm giving so anybody can read them. Um, California Dreaming Restaurant. She apparently also worked at this restaurant, but was fired. According to the person, June Dinson was going back to the business to pick up her last check late at night and attempted to get into the business, but the doors were locked. She knocked on the doors, but did not get a response. She later made a report that two black males had come up to her and beat her up and put her in the back of her vehicle in the trunk. It was reported that when the employees came out of the California Dreaming restaurant, they heard June Denson banging from inside the trunk. They let her out and it appeared she had been assaulted. According to the person, June Denson sued this business because they did not let her into the restaurant, causing her to become assaulted by these two black males. Uh, today's Memorial Day. Last night I had a conversation with uh, McKenna Denson about this, June. And she did not remember how many people there were involved in the attack. She couldn't remember if it was one person or two person. In her previous report to the police, she stated that one person had a gun. She described it as a Glock. That person pistol whipped her, then they stuffed her in the trunk of her car. Um, when you read the report, I believe you will come to probably the same conclusion I did, that one of her co-workers who was mentioned in this police report was likely in on it and had assisted her, perhaps even by uh, punching her in the face. I don't know. Um, but the story is extremely far-fetched. The police never found these two black uh, men, and uh, the, the case remains unsolved to this day. The next incident involved a married man by the name of Colonel Hayes, who was stationed in Quantico, Virginia. Apparently, June Denson was seeing Colonel Hayes immediately, uh, intimately, I'm sorry, and Colonel Hayes was married at the time. June Denson again made a police report that she was walking across a field and was approached by a black male with a knife and was ordered to undress by this black male. According to June Denson, she undressed and then kicked the black man in the groin and ran away. June Denson was contacted by a resident in front of their house naked. After the police responded, June Denson indicated she could not remember any of the incident, but did take the police back to the area of the field where she was crossing and pointed out Colonel Hayes' vehicle in order to get him into some sort of trouble. The caller indicated that they were not aware of whether or not June Denson had obtained any money from Colonel Hayes as a result of this, but believes that the story that June Denson gave was totally fabricated. The next incident, which the person said occurred about three or four years ago, occurred when June Denson was flying to Salt Lake City. According to the person, um, actually I think I have the exact date of that, uh, I believe this incident on the plane was July 29th of 2001. I've got some rather copious notes on this. Um, let's see here. According to the person, June Denson was taking, and it's redacted, it's blacked out here, so it's taking some sort of medication, but was also drinking on the aircraft, and when the two of them mixed, she began to flip out. The person told me they had a layover in Atlanta, Georgia, and she flipped out on the police and was arrested for that. McKenna Denson has confirmed this story to me as, as being true. The next incident occurred in South Carolina and Mount Pleasant involved a subject by the name of David Denson who lived across the street from June Denson at the time. Apparently, June Denson accused David of rape, and he went to trial on that charge and was acquitted. Now, I know David's last name, and so does McKenna Denson. I'm not going to say it here because I think this man has been put through enough. David 
was one of at least, and this is an important part, David was one of at least five men, I think there might be six though, but at least five men that McKenna Denson, since 1979, has accused of rape or sexual assault. None of these men have ever been successfully prosecuted by anyone. The person told me that June Denson had filed a restraining order against a Brent, I'm not going to say his last name, and also has a restraining order against her from a stomach doctor that was a doctor of one of June Denson's daughters. The person did not have a reason for why this doctor filed the restraining order against June, but thought it might be important to advise me. Um, on September 16, 2004, I received a call from Carla, whose last name I'm not going to say, from the insurance company handling P.F. Chang's, and she told me that she had spoken with one of the attorneys, John Hayes, who had again spoken with the anonymous female caller. This anonymous female caller told John that she re recalled the restaurant in which June Denson filed a claim at to get her teeth fixed and stated that it was the SS Subs in Colorado Springs. McKenna Denson worked for a BMW dealership and in uh, 2004, this dealership had a habit of purchasing for their employees and customers, I guess, uh, submarine sandwiches from a local sub shop virtually every Saturday. And one Saturday, McKenna ordered a chicken salad. She claimed that she broke a tooth on that chicken salad, and of course, needless to say, she took action against the company that provided the meat for these chicken salads in an effort to try and get some sort of settlement out of it. Uh, apparently, they settled out of court and agreed to pay to get her tooth fixed. Um, here we go, let's see. Hmm. We find some more here. Well, let's see. Reno Sheriff's Office arrested June Denson, who went by June Hughes, her maiden name at the time. Uh, the arrest date for this violation was July 30th, 1987. And the charge was described as uttering a forged prescription. Uh, they also found an arrest from July 29th of 2001. Um, oh wait, this is the same thing, uh, Atlanta Police Department where she was arrested for simple battery and obstruction of officers. That was the plane incident here. Um, says, I also found it appears that June Denson has an outstanding warrant for her arrest in El Paso County, Colorado for contempt of court with the date of the warrant being August 27th, 2004. Um... Let's get to some other good stuff here. Um, keep in mind that McKenna Denson um, was in the MTC in 1984. She, January 26 to April 5th of 1984, she then went off on a mission to Washington, D.C. She was supposed to go to Columbia, uh, uh, down in the South America, but she didn't because of some issue with women sister missionaries going down there. So instead, she went to the Washington, D.C. mission. She told me last night she was only there for a few weeks when, and here's a report from, uh, well, this is actually from David Jordan um, from the, uh, I believe he's private counsel that the LDS Church hired uh, to dig into this. And he found out, and she has admitted this to me, that um, let's see, it's, this is pretty disturbing. Here we go. Um, wait a second. Okay, well, while she was in Washington, D.C. on her mission, she claimed that a man had tried to rape her. I'm trying to find this. Here we go. Um, she was only there a few weeks when she told her mission president, Brian Swinton, that while going to her car to get her camera, she was attacked by a black man who threw her down on the ground, tore her clothing, and raped her. 
Now, she told me last night that he did not, she did not claim that he raped her. She told me that he scared her and tried to rape her, but she escaped. That was the story that she claimed. She later admitted to a lot of people, including myself, that that story was completely fabricated. Uh, she claims that she was so traumatized by the incident in the MTC that she made up this story of being raped by a black man in Washington, D.C. so that she could get an excuse to go home. This letter states that she persisted in this story, was sent back to Provo to be checked for sexually transmitted diseases, tested for pregnancy, and received psychological counseling. Uh, after several weeks, she was medically cleared to return to the mission field, this time to go to the Mil Wisconsin Milwaukee mission where she arrived on June 4th of 1984. Now, keep in mind that McKenna Denson told me last night, and she also recently told Radio Free Mormon in an interview that, um, that, uh, what did she say? I, I'm sorry, I, there's just so many facts here. Oh, she said before she could go back out on her mission that she had to meet with Thomas S. Monson. She met with him in his office, in the church office building. The meeting lasted 45 minutes to an hour and she doesn't remember anything from that meeting. She doesn't remember what floor it was on. She doesn't remember if he had windows in his office. Doesn't remember the color of the carpet. Doesn't remember anything he told her. A 45 minute to one hour meeting with Thomas S. Monson, arguably one of the most revered and respected men in Mormonism at that time, and <laughs> she claims she can't remember anything from that conversation, but she does remember that he said something at the end of the conversation that got her really upset, but she doesn't remember what that thing is. Um, In 1985, Denson traveled to Taiwan to teach English. While well, there, she had breast augmentation surgery. She persuaded her branch president, Rodney Nash, to use church funds to purchase her a plane ticket back to the United States, representing that she needed medical care for complications resulting from surgery to remove a tumor from her breast. Ooh, sounds serious. Sounds like cancer maybe, right? Talking about cancer. Um, McKenna Denson, well, you know what, I mean, I don't want to spoil the, the surprise here, so, so give me a second here. Um, let's see. By the way, while McKenna Denson was on her mission, she was disfellowshipped uh, and released from her mission on October 4th, 1984 for sexual misconduct with another missionary. She told me she gave the guy a blowjob. Um, as another missionary. Um... Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, by the way, the restaurant, California Dreamin', where she was assaulted by two black men outside of the restaurant. She, would, she was fired from the restaurant, I believe, three days before this incident happened. And approximately, uh, I believe also approximately uh, a few days before, it was about a week before the incident happened, she specifically asked another employee who would be responsible if somebody was injured or attacked out in the parking lot because they had somewhat recently gotten rid of or stopped paying for some additional security that apparently would hang out in the parking lot. Um, and then, lo and behold, she got attacked by two black men. Or is it one black man? She's not too sure. Depends on when you ask her. Um, Let's see. <sighs> While living in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, Denson engaged in an affair with a married doctor. I won't mention his name. After the doctor announced his intention to break off the relationship, Ms. Denson made a number of threats against him, which ultimately led him to seek and obtain a restraining order from the East Cooper Magistrate Court in Charleston County, South Carolina. Um, I, that just speaks for itself. I'm not going to comment on that, uh, whether it's true or not. I don't know. Um, we're living in Colorado Springs, uh, 
McKenna Denson accused uh, a man with whom she had a two and a half year relationship with of sexually assaulting her. During the same time period, she also accused her neighbor, neighbor Michael, whose last name I won't say, of being a peeping Tom and soliciting sex with her while living in the Crystal area or Crystal City area of Northern Virginia. Uh, let's see, she that was a claim against the insurance company for the uh, the plates. Um, in 1994, I believe it was, uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 2004. In 2004, McKenna Denson went to a P.F. Chang's with, I believe, a total of seven people, including herself. She got up at one point during the meal and went to the bathroom. The police report states that she was in the bathroom for an unusually long time, so somebody sent her daughter in to go check on her because at this time, McKenna Denson was about 12 weeks pregnant. McKenna, McKenna Denson came outside of the bathroom, sat down at the table, and shortly after, almost immediately afterwards, had a piece of cake that they were all sharing. She referred to it as the Great Wall of Chocolate. She immediately started choking on this little piece of frosting that she put in her mouth, and um, it turns out that she had swallowed what appeared to be, well, what was, the police confirmed, seven little pieces of a razor blade. It was like an X-Acto knife that you can snap the end off when the, when the end gets dull and you can bust it off and you have a new tip. Well, there was seven of those little tips that she had actually swallowed, and by the time they had done surgery on her, they opened her up and they found it was basically already in her intestines, all seven pieces, and rather than slice her intestines open in seven different spots or five different spots, wherever it was, that they were just going to let them pass and give her laxatives and, and, and you know, deal with any injuries that might happen in the process as they come out. Keep in mind, she swallowed razor blades while she was pregnant. And the, I think the summary of the police report on this incident probably says it best. The very last page of the 66-page police report says, and I quote, No assault took place. Evidence points toward victim doing this to herself. I have spent at least 50 hours over the last seven days investigating McKenna Denson, and I have come to the undeniable conclusion that uh, the police did. I believe that McKenna Denson swallowed those razor blades in an effort to get money out of P.F. Chang's. She has told me repeatedly that she got $30,000, that $10,000 went to her lawyer and $20,000 went to her. It gets better, wait. I should add that McKenna Denson denies these next two claims, okay? While Ms. Denson was employed at a BMW dealership in Colorado Springs, Colorado, she was terminated for soliciting funds from coworkers under the false pretense that she needed money for cancer treatments. While living in Bowling Green, Kentucky, she was terminated from her employment with Soki Happenings Magazine for running a story to make money for a fake cancer fund. While living in Mount Pleasant, California, Ms. Denson persuaded a local newspaper to publish a story soliciting funds for her oldest daughter to go on a humanitarian relief mission to Guyana. Her daughter never made such a trip and Ms. Denson kept the money. Regarding the two cancer claims, McKenna told me, point blank, that she was diagnosed with a rare form of bone cancer that she can't, uh, has trouble pronouncing, and the first time I asked her about this, she said, uh, I, I don't know, it was some kind of a bone cancer, and I have that recording, uh, th that conversation recorded. Um, I've been recording every conversation I've had with McKenna Denson for quite some time now because, frankly, I was having trouble believing her. Um... It gets better though, there's solid proof. Trust me, it's coming. Um, let's see, she was apprehended for shoplifting at a Home Depot. She was apprehended for shoplifting at a Kroger. She told me last night and before, both of those claims are true. Um, she was convicted of a DUI in Bowling Green, Kentucky. 
She was, which is again true, she says, she was arrested in Salt Lake City for shoplifting, prosecuted and sentenced to probation. Um, she told me that yes, she was indeed arrested for shoplifting again. Um, I haven't dug into this, this claim yet, but this claim says, uh, on several occasions, she planted false evidence in an attempt to incriminate her two oldest daughters of drug offenses. Ms. Denson made anonymous phone calls to the police to report her daughters, but they were exonerated. Now, some people might say, how would they know she's making anonymous phone calls to the police? You know they record those phone calls, right? Yeah. Um, within the past two weeks, Ms. Denson was arrested. Now, this was dated March 13th. Within the past two weeks, Ms. Denson was arrested and jailed in El Paso, Colorado for felony identity theft. And right now, as I record this, on Memorial Day 2019, unless something has happened in the last 48 hours, McKenna Denson currently has a warrant for her arrest in Panola County, Mississippi for reckless driving, disorderly conduct, and resisting arrest. Now, as I was digging into this story and trying to verify or refute some of these things, and frankly, I was looking to refute them because I trusted McKenna Denson implicitly, considered her a friend, and I couldn't comprehend the possibility that these claims were not true, um, or, or that they were true, rather. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine who was present when McKenna Denson uh, went on Heart of the Matter, um, Sean McCraney's show in Salt Lake City, and she did a three-part uh, interview with Sean McCraney about her life and, and all these things that have happened to her. And she said something rather unusual that at least five witnesses heard. She shared a story of the time where somebody once spiked her orange juice with Drano when she swallowed a little bit of it and had to go to the hospital. Problem is, is that this, this incident where she's sh sharing with multiple people that she swallowed Drano in her orange juice, this conversation happened September 21st, 2018, which is roughly four months and nine days before she alleges somebody came into her house and poisoned her Drano or orange juice with Drano. She also has used uh, Drano or, or orange juice in the past for other things. Uh, the David fellow that she claims raped her, she claimed that he came into her house and slipped Rohypnol into her orange juice and then raped her. This is a man that was not found guilty of the crime. Um, I, the evidence is overwhelming. Um, I'm just going to cut to the chase. It's 32 minutes long already, and this needs to just end right now. I personally do not believe McKenna Denson. I think she is a pathological liar. I believe that McKenna Denson is possibly the worst human being I have ever personally met. Um, it makes me very sad to say that, but let me tell you something. Um, as far as the, the claims made against Joseph Bishop, I have already removed from my YouTube channel the video in which I went and followed Joseph Bishop at his attorney's office as he was leaving his attorney's office and questioned him. I have removed videos on my channel that show McKenna Denson in Joseph Bishop's uh, home ward in Arizona confronting him and warning the word that he's a you know sexual predator. We've all listened to the Joseph Bishop tape, or at least many of us have. I believe that Joseph Bishop is probably a man of questionable moral integrity. Um, do I believe that he raped McKenna Denson in the way that she describes in the basement of the Missionary Training Center in Provo? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I, I, I think what it really comes down to is her credibility and her credibility isn't just a zero, in my opinion. It is negative. It's, it's below zero. Um, I would not trust that woman in my home. I would not trust her near my children. 
I would not want to be anywhere near her because if you get alone with McKenna Denson, she could very well make some sort of allegation that you sexually assaulted her. She's done it many, many times in the past. There was one particular quote in, in one of these police reports, I believe it was the one from California Dreaming, where the police claimed, and a, and a, a, a person claimed McKenna Denson tried to extort money from him and gave him some sort of a deposit slip for $10,000 and said to him quietly something to the effect of, um, you know, I've done this before, I've done this many times before, don't mess with me. Uh, I believe she has done this many times before, and I believe that these police reports, uh, I've got 60, 70, I've got nearly 100 pages of police reports. There are at least, out there somewhere, there are at least nine separate times where McKenna Denson has been arrested for something. Uh, a lot of times it's shoplifting, um, it, it, it's felonies, um, it's, I just, I don't believe her. I don't believe a single fucking word that woman says. And anybody, in my opinion, that would give McKenna Denson money after this truly ought to get their head examined. And by the way, if you still think McKenna Denson is innocent, contact me via email. My email address is newnamenoah at yahoo.com and I will send you a copy of the police reports that I have and um, if you find evidence that proves that she is telling the truth, let me know and I will apologize to her. I'm not so sure if Joseph Bishop really deserves an apology, but because I don't believe that he really did what he did, uh, I'm gonna offer one. Joseph Bishop, I'm sorry. I still think you're kind of a sleazebag, but I'm sorry for my role in being essentially, as the Mad Domer would say, uh, slightly complicit in McKenna Denson's current public meltdown. Um, this doesn't mean that the Mormon Church doesn't have a serious problem when it comes to sexually uh, <laughs> protecting sexual predators. Um, they do. Uh, they have a, a, a very deep serious problem with it. The case of Michael Jensen in Harrisburg, West Virginia is a very good example of this. Um, my own uncle, Mark Bench, Earl Markham Bench. Uh, I could be wrong. I think as I speak, he is still the president of the Manhattan, New York temple. I, I know that his replacement has been chosen, but I think perhaps Uncle Mark is still the president of the Manhattan New York Temple. My uncle Mark Bench, uh, I'm not gonna call him a pedophile per se, but I know for a fact he has sexually molested multiple children. And I would welcome a conversation in a public forum with my uncle Mark to address those uh, allegations. Or better yet, hey Uncle Mark, why don't you sue me for telling everybody that you've molested children. Hmm? Bring it on. McKenna Denson, you wanna sue me for slander? Bring it on. I look forward to that lawsuit. That's about it. Um, literally for the last week, as more and more evidence is coming forward and I'm reading this, I have been absolutely seething with anger over having this person in our community. Uh, people have donated thousands and thousands, probably tens of thousands of dollars to her. I personally have given McKenna Denson at least $300, at least, and I have allowed her to stay in my house in our guest room. I have donated dozens and dozens, probably possibly hundreds of hours of my time helping her out with videos and editing and uh, I, it makes me want to throw up. This just goes to show that you don't have to be in a cult to be duped by somebody with a little charisma that's bound and determined to rip you off. I believe that McKenna Denson is to the ex-Mormon community what she, she's like, she's the, 
she's the Mark Hoffman. If Mark Hoffman and Paul H. Dunn got together and had a baby, because same-sex uh, marriage was legal, and that baby grew into an adult, I believe it would be McKenna Denson. She is, in my opinion, the absolute lowest of the low. She, in my opinion, and based on reports from the police, she literally took money for multiple people on multiple occasions for cancer treatment. She told me last night that she didn't take any money from anybody. That's what she's claiming, but she did tell me last night that after she found out she didn't have cancer, she didn't tell everybody that she didn't have cancer. She told another person she liked the love and attention that was being poured upon her by friends and family with the whole cancer diagnosis, and she didn't want that to end. Um, hate to say it, McKenna, it ended. So have a nice life. If I ever see you again, uh, it won't be too soon because I want nothing to do with you ever again. Don't call me, don't contact me, don't email me, McKenna Denson, June. Um, you, my friend, can rot in hell. I don't believe in hell, but if there was a hell, pretty sure you'd go there. So that's it. Um, anybody has any questions, you've got my phone number. Uh, if you don't, well, Google it. It ain't hard to find. Thanks. Have a nice day. And by the way, based on her MO, I'm about 90% sure that sometime in the next few months, McKenna Denson is going to make some wild allegations about me and anybody else that might support the fact that she's a pathological lying piece of shit. Um, or I'm sorry, not a fact. That's my opinion. So I should clear that up. I don't want to state things as facts when they are in fact my opinion. So have a nice life, McKenna. And I hope that you have miserable success in your efforts to be a grifter in other states. Um, that's it.